Hi friends. From the looks of it, we are diving into Say's Hydra Beam Sheer Brightening Under Eye Concealer. This arrived today, hopping in impromptu vibes. Because of that, this will be a first impressions. I still wanted to film in presenting the concealer, looking at the swatch, the shade match, comparing it to, of course, my LYS Triple Fix concealers that I have been using and also applying my face makeup as I have been recently along the lines of the routine I shared on my spring summer skin tutorial using the new blurring balm from Danessa. I would have like to upload that video already just so you can have some context on this product but yeah let's get into it and if it's your first time here hi i'm alicia an online coach a lover of beauty and movement i love to teach all the things talk about concealer sometimes you know do a little makeup review sometimes let's get into the product details my phone, hold on. I purchased the Say Concealer from Sephora.com. Again, it arrived today. This retails for $26. It comes in a total of how many shades? It comes in a total of nine shades, perhaps because the coverage is light and stretches across brackets of skin tones at a time. Six milliliters, 0.2 ounces of product. What suggested shelf life? We have 12 months, hey, hey, hey. What can we expect? An ultra light, ultra hydrating concealer that visibly brightens, blurs, and smooths skin to create an all over radiant finish. Coverage is light, finish is radiant. Some ingredients call outs we have olive derived, squalene, and plant derived glycerin. Mega hydrators that lock in moisture and leave skin quenched and glowing tomato extract an anti-inflammatory extract that visibly brightens plums and evens skin tone cucumber extract soothes and ascorbic and lactic acids protects with antioxidants my goodness a note about skincare and makeup fusion when i was at bays i failed to pack an eye cream yes it happens to all of us i did have my LYS concealer. And while I wouldn't typically rely on a concealer for my under eye hydration needs, I did feel better about the fact that I had the LYS to at least place something on my eyes. I could have used regular moisturizer for sure, but I wanted something a little more eye centric, I guess, product realm wise to apply under my eyes and to know the Say has these ingredients. Again, not relying on the Say to drastically transform my under eye circles, whatever concerns I have. I rely on the say for coverage, for brightening, for radiance, but if I was ever in a pickle, then I would apply the say Hydra Beam as an under eye moisturizer, hydrator. Totally fine. Just to say I'm not against it, right? I'm not against the notion of skincare being formulated with the makeup, okay? But at the same time, I'm not relying on my makeup to transform my skin. I then rely on my SPF, my tretinoin, my uh, AHA serums that I apply at night. So just wanted to get that out the way. The reason I was compelled to try the Say Concealer, despite me already owning the LYS, is because I am a huge fan of their cream natural bronzer. I have the shade medium bronze, the sun melt, outstanding product. I use it all the time interchangeably now with products that I have recently introduced into my routine. But because of this, I was compelled to try their Hydra Beam. There are other complexion products in the Say line that piqued my interest but didn't quite get there yet. For instance, they have their skin tint, the slip tint. The reason why I didn't go for the slip tint because I don't like tints with SPF in them. You have to apply a lot of SPF, around three fingers worth, and three fingers worth of tint it's just too much. Maybe people view uh, tinted moisturizers with SPF as a security blanket. And sure, if you already apply a separate SPF, an extra layer won't hurt. 
I just don't like the smell. I don't like the smell. I haven't tried it yet, so I, I'm bashing it without trying it. But just to show you, I am using this SPF at the moment. It is the Skin Aqua Classic. Okay, can't get enough of this stuff. They also have their Air Set Loose Powder, which felt amazing when I tested it in Sephora. Very air light, whipped, finely milled. I'm sure that's a hit product. But again, I'm just sticking to the concealer. I have accumulated quite too many of complexion product in the, the last few weeks. So I'm trying to keep it, you know, conservative. Here is the component, modest in packaging. You have the plastic vial with the silver cap and the doe foot. The doe foot, let's take a look, is pointed round. It doesn't look like it has a, well, no, it has a slight groove here on one side of the doe foot applicator. I bought the shade, a uh, Hydra Bean 5, shade 5, and that is described to be for medium to tan skin tones with golden undertones. So let's take a look at that shade. Okay, okay. So it definitely leans on the warm side. I didn't mind it because I was contemplating possibly using this as an all-over face concealer gig with the say glowy skin gel, which, my goodness, forgive me, another product that influenced me, in addition to the sun melt, to try the concealer because the say complexion products that I have purchased have been hitting, okay? The next color up is for medium skin tones with red undertones. I was unsure if that would have been too light. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. Compared to the LYS Triple Fix in TN3, so let's take a look at that. This is said to be more neutral. Yeah, the the say might be, ooh, might be a little too warm for my inner eyes. Oops. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to mix and match. That's okay. I also have MG5 from LYS. Here we go. Definitely lighter, but I use this sparingly under my eyes mostly under my eyes mixed and then all over and this you know we we're gonna have to take a look we're going to experiment it's gonna be okay with all product details and swatches out the way why don't you come in a little closer <gasps> that's enough brows are done already let's just do a little brush through i'll try this under my eyes just to see the color because Definitely when I turn this way, it's uh, huh, it's a little warm. And the doe foot applicator doesn't dispense a ton of product. Okay. I can see it's very warm under my eyes. Yes. But in terms of the texture, however, I do detect the radiance. You can see there is a difference. You can see the coverage. It is warmer. Maybe that works to my advantage in that better tackling the discoloration under my eyes. And it is light coverage, so the darkness is not completely erased, but I have abandoned that achievement. I, I think, you know, for under eye circles, if it's really bad, you have to do some major color correction and not just rely on the concealer to tackle that job. Otherwise though, the texture has a little bit of tack to it, not sticky, but due to its radiant finish, I think expected, a little more dewy on the application. Not too bad, let's do the other side. I think I've gotten used to applying concealer shades that are not super brightening under the eyes. I realized that was a trend very much in the uh, social media beauty realm of things a few years back where you would use a lighter concealer to brighten the under eyes. But for every day, I think using a shade that's actually your skin tone and not one or two shades lighter is a more practical you can let me know down below i don't think you can tell it's too warm let me put on the light light is on is there too much golden under my eyes fam hmm hmm where's the mirror it's not too bad i don't hate it 
I don't hate it because I just wanted to get a little more versatility from five, whereas four I thought would have been too light for the rest of my face. Let's do this. In a realistic scenario, I would apply the super glowy gel. This is in the shade Sun Glow, which I adore for its bronzing properties, the fact that it's moisturizing, but still lightweight. This has been my first step in my skincare routine, no matter what I apply. The Yummy Skin, the Rose Ink Skin Tint. Let me make sure I wipe this because I'm wearing white and uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a good outcome. I'm getting this on my white top. Super Glowy Gel, this is from my visor. Sorry, go away. Now applying the say on spots that need a little more coverage. So I'll place it here, here. <laughs> Place it everywhere. This is what I used to do with the uh, Dior Forever, I think. That concealer is fantastic. It only has a six month suggested shelf life, which isn't great. So you have to use that right away. But the consistency was fluid and very much an appropriate texture to apply all over your face and not just limit the product to under eye application. Okay, number five is doing his thing. All right, not terrible. When I saw that swatch compared to the LYS, I was getting worried. And again, the doe foot applicator does not deposit a ton of product. It doesn't overwhelm the skin. So I like that, especially if you are a light makeup user and one to not use a ton, especially for concealing. Get a little more here. Okay. As far as the finish, I quite like it. It's still lightweight. It does have a radiant uh, dry down for sure. However, I think the skin still appears natural and because of the super glowy gel You have that dew left behind, but it's not greasy or oily uh, That's why I love that formula because it gives you a bit of natural highlight But that's just from the product itself and not because it relies on oil or or other ingredients that might not feel great on the skin not too bad. I really I like this concealer, okay. Going in with the sun melt. So this is what I like about the sun melt where you use concealer on the portions that need a little bit of coverage on your blemishes like you see here. And the sun melt may be a little, a little more coverage, but just where it's applied to the hollows, which I usually like to apply. I pounce it around just on this general region here. And the sun melt itself will give a little more coverage there. So it's nice to tackle your uneven needs or concerns with this product and just the concealer. And I could only imagine how great the, the loose powder is if you want to lightly set everything, but it still appears skin-like and finished and not dry, then that will be a great last step to wrap everything up. Okay, we're looking bronze and beautiful. Now for the yummy skin, because I have five and six, I wonder if five will be, no, five is good because five is a golden undertone, I think. So I'm applying a little bit of five here just on my jaw. I don't think I look too orange. Yeah, fam, you could let me know down below, but this is, I like, I'm happy I bought number five in the say, yes. Compared to my body though, I think as much as I like to think I'm in the golden undertone of things and maybe if I turn off the light, hold on. I still run a little more neutral. I still run neutral. Unless you're really grilling me for <laughs> differences in undertone, I don't think it's that noticeable. Hold on, let me go to the bathroom and check. Okay, undertone check, there is Definitely an increase of golden undertone on my face versus the rest of my body, but I don't think it's that noticeable so much that, you know, a stranger will stop me in my tracks and say, is that your head? You have a different body. About the concealer, however, 
It doesn't set completely. That might be advantageous to one who has very dry under eyes, who doesn't typically apply powder there. But for someone who is oily, don't know if this will be the concealer of your choice if you decide to use this concealer. And again, this is a first impressions. I've only had it on not even for 10 minutes, I think. So I will get back to you in regards to the wear, especially if I decide to set it. But you can see that there is a lot of radiance here. There's a lot of shine, but it might be just a matter of you tapping away the makeup that settles into the lines that sit right under your lashes. And maybe that's not a big deal to you. I will, however, show how the concealer looks when I do set it. And I'll apply Wayne Goss's powder because it is very, lightweight and whipped. It sounds like a similar texture to the Say. So I'm gonna whip it right under the eyes and it doesn't seem to change the color of it, but now you can, I think, recognize that powdering the Say took away that radiance and this is without powder. And you know, I don't think it negatively impacts the finish whatsoever, but necessary, if maybe you wanted to say because you're around my skin tone and you like the undertone of number five but you're oily and you're reconsidering i think as long as you're able to set it the finish is quite lovely so again here is the say set and here it is not set but just know the concealer is not going to set itself there's more of a natural finish in the LYS. Yeah, the LYS, I could apply on its own and not worry about it, but the Say definitely sits higher on the radiance spectrum, I feel, compared to LYS. If you're one to forego powder and you don't want to use it, then maybe you'll reconsider trying the Say, but I quite like it. I'm very happy I tried this concealer. I am. I had high expectations simply from my experience with the Sun Melt, the Super Glowy Gel. Those are the only items I have from Say thus far. Is that true? Yes. I know they have liquid blushes, the loose powder, the slip tint. There are other products I would like to try from their line, but just judging from the three I have now, wearing them together, applying a little bit of the Danessa, some of Wayne's powder, just to lightly set those areas that you do not want to see any creasing from or any wear from. This is like, this is my summer, this is my summer face. Summer face is right here. And of course, I have to apply some of my Final Surgeons. I've been using the heck out of these products. In fact, I've been so just infatuated by the colors of the spectral shine and the skin spark something might come along that will pique my interest but right now i'm like i don't need it i got this this is dew of dawn i like to place this on the high points of my cheeks and i went into further detail about this product in my terracotta video where i had the terracotta look going on but to have a highlighter that has like a softer focus finish and not so high shine, it's just lovely. Inferno, Inferno is my color. I love Singe too. It's so incredibly hard to decide which is my favorite. They each have a different role, I think, in terms of you know color delivery and the mood I wanna go for, but you can't go wrong with Inferno ever, especially now as we enter the summer season to achieve like that sunburnt look without the sunburnt damage is key. And of course, Suku's flawless lip gloss in Awakicha. All right, that concludes our first impressions of the Say Hydra Beam Concealer. As of now, from this demo, in using it with my other products, I like this concealer. I have to use it more, especially interchangeably with the LYS. That's the only concealer that I've been using. I threw away my Pat McGrath because it was old, and I wanted to change it up. The Pat McGrath concealer has a lot of coverage and I think more appropriate for other scenarios where I need 
just like that sweet clean under eye but as the seasons change i find myself not reaching towards higher coverage products anymore i like the skin tints the bronzy gels and now with the Danessa Blurring Balm, which itself is a light sheer coverage product, this is where I sit on the spectrum in terms of makeup. And I think the Say has found itself in my rotation. I will continue using this product. It is May 5th. Cinco de Mayo. And by the end of the month, I will return with my fully comprehensive thoughts about this concealer. But right now, again, the markers we covered, the color match, the application, the blend, I think all those points are fantastic. Some considerations, depending on where you sit on the skin type spectrum, this is light and radiant coverage. It's not going to set if you have oily under eyes, which I think a region on a lot of skin types tend to be drier than the rest of your face. But whatever your situation might be, perhaps you reach for a concealer that has a little more of a soft matte finish or more coverage. Again, this is light, radiant, a different intention altogether. I think different from the LYS. Comparatively, just based on their product descriptions alone on Sephora, the LYS is, I would consider, a medium coverage and more of a natural, softer matte finish. Not completely soft matte, I think more natural. And both I like, but I will use the same more. I think even though the Say Concealer is warmer than TN3, it still works itself out simply because I think it's light coverage so it can get away with, again, a larger range of skin tones and undertones than a medium full coverage product would. Let me know down below if you picked up the Hydra Beam, what your shade is so we can help our fan below if they're deciding which shade to go with based on what they've used already and what your spring summer skin routine has been looking like many of you shared yours in my summer skin video thank you so much for doing so but i'm excited the complexion game has been it's been nailing it and amazing to have products that just integrate so well with each other and elevating one's complexion routine without necessarily having to cover the skin but just to beautifully enhance it. I'll see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Concealer Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care, and I will see you again soon.